This is the third and final part of the Awesome Rolling Toolbox Tour update. On the other side here, I have my extension cords. I have my air hoses, my quarter inch flexible air hoses. And then I've taken advantage of some space here and hung a couple of uh, long fiberglass tapes as well as my electrician's uh, fish tape. This area right here is where I have two hose reels, just inexpensive plastic hose reels that you can get at any hardware store. And I have a 100 foot 10-3 extension cord rolled up on the lower one and a 100 foot 3-8 air hose rolled up on the other. I don't bring the compressor out of the trailer. It always stays in the trailer. And I roll the hose out on every job. I need air on every job. There are gas guns and battery guns, and they're getting better, but air is still something I need on every job. I, they, I, they don't make small 23 gauge guns or these little wire staplers. There's a lot of nail guns, especially for a finished carpenter, that they don't make. Uh, and so even if I had an 18 gauge battery gun or gas gun, two things. It's much larger than this and I, I prefer working with this with the, the smaller whip hoses. I've got the air. I like these guns better. They're less expensive and I have multiples so I save money on every single one. But also when I'm nailing, I, I like the feel of them better than the bigger, heavier uh, battery or battery gas guns. So air is a reality. I can't be efficient without air. I use it for not only running the guns, but I also use it for cleanup, uh, particularly cleaning up my tools. So air is necessary. So how do I get the air? And this I found to be the most efficient thing. Rather than muscling my compressor in, going in and finding a place to plug it in, and then running the air from there, I have this big long hose. I just drop it a few feet out through a hole in the bottom of the trailer, and there's a little door that a little panel that I close over that when these these the cord and the hose are reeled in the cord is a hundred footer and I just pull it to the nearest outlet and then come back in and there's a pigtail that I just plug in it's not a super sophisticated system just a pigtail I plug it in once the cord is plugged in then I have power my compressor is plugged in ready to go my lights they're on a switch. They have, are powered from that. I have some outlets that are powered from it. And all of my battery chargers are all plugged in all the time. So by plugging in that one cord, I power up the entire trailer. Taking a 100 foot 10 3 extension cord and, and bringing it out and, and uncoiling it and then plugging it into the trailer it would take far more time than just dropping it out and pulling it, rolling it out. And at the end of the job, I just simply unplug it from the wall, unplug it on this end from the pigtail, and roll it in. And the same thing with the air hose. It plugs into some black iron that supply air from the compressor to this hose, as well as to a couple of other spots where I have air inside the trailer. So the compressor supplies air in here and on the job, and I don't have to muscle this big heavy compressor. I did build this space to fit a wheelbarrow compressor and I may get one in the future but this is a large single tank and the the engine the electric engine is a little more challenging on these uh, type of compressors the direct drives whereas the the wheelbarrows are belt drives and they have solenoid starts and so they will run on weaker power so I may change out in the future, but this is working and uh, I just don't want to spend the money at this time. Up here I have a lot of electric power tools. These are cubbies I've built in many trailers and in my trucks as well. And they're simply a quarter inch piece of plywood and some dados. These are non-structural so I can move them and adjust these spaces. So this entire length on three levels I can continue to adjust as my tools change uh, in, you know, whether I replace a tool, 
or if I want to just reorganize. And I do have some type of organization. I have my skill saws mostly up here, although I have a battery skill saw here and a small skill saw here. I've got my routers, planers, sanders, and again, I have like my finish guns here, as well as a couple of the larger finish guns up here and here, and then I have framing guns. So I have my, my air guns in, in this area. So a lot of guns for, it looks like somewhere around uh, almost 20 guns in this space right here. You could imagine if each gun was in a box, how much room that would take. Plus I can see exactly every gun without, uh, without having to hunt for it in a drawer or stored where I can't see it. And I can grab the gun out and take it right on the job. So with the air on the job and having such a selection of nail guns, I have the right nail gun for the project that I'm on. On the top here, I have a stand-up screw gun. I don't use that too much these days. When I'm doing new construction, I always screw off the subfloors. Um, and having a stand-up gun, one of the PAM guns, uh, it's an excellent tool, but it's uh, getting a long break these days. I have a fast cap straight edge. I also have a dovetail jig that I use for larger projects up there as well. So I'm utilizing some space, putting some tools uh, that I don't use that much. They're a little bit out of sight, but it's space I have, and I do know they're there. I do use the, the uh, straight edge quite a bit, but it's easy. I just, it's just hanging there. There's nothing holding it in place. The drawers, just like these drawers here, these are a little uh, uh, not quite as deep this way. And I just have a lot of, of things here, tools as well as inventory. The drawers are all labeled. Um, I went without them labeled for a while as I was changing things around and it really makes a difference to take a few minutes and label your drawers so that you can go right to what you need. And even though I'm the one that loads these drawers, with this many drawers, if, if they're not labeled, I'm going to end up opening two or three drawers before I get to the, uh, to the right one. I mentioned having uh, an inventory of nails and screws and things. Over here, I have bins with my framing nails, the various sizes out for me to grab one or two runs or a coil. I also have down below boxes of inventory, both of screws and of nails, that I then load these up so that I can grab out what I need. So I do keep a good inventory of the, of the fasteners that I use on the job. I also mentioned uh, with these larger um, butaners that there's different sizes. And so this drawer here, this is really a lot of those little screws that you know I'll find that I need. I'll buy a box of them, I'll need them on a project, and I just put them in these little butaners. I can visually see, and it's just one small drawer, but you know, it's again, it's another little mini hardware store, and I keep lots of even electrical, um, crimps and uh, big uh, magnetic washers, just whatever I come up with, I have a few extra so that I can usually work out a, a problem on a job with what I have in the trailer. I've shown this before, but this is a, the charging station. So I have all of the chargers I need. They're all plugged in all the time. As soon as I plug the trailer in, these are plugged in. So I can keep my batteries charged and on the shelf and ready to go. And it's easy to grab a charged battery and drop the uncharged one on the various chargers. When it's done, then I can just put it on the shelf. Like these two are done. And these are screwed on. You know, I could pop them off. They have those keyholes. You just put the screws and put them on and drop them, but they don't go anywhere. And because I'm using gravity, I have them in such a way the batteries drop on. Even in transit, these batteries won't, won't pop off. In here, I kind of put a lot of tools that um, I need access to all the time and can take up a lot of space and hard to find in drawers. So I have pencils and, and uh, markers and crayons, uh, as well as, uh, you know, like Allen wrenches and, you know, tons of Allen wrenches. I could probably throw away about 90% of them. A lot of them are just repeats. And then I have some empty bins here that just a room. I've got a lot of expansion room. I've gotten so organized here that I have a lot of extra space. I have more room here. I put this fast cap foam in to hold these 
tools that I'm using all the time, a lot of measuring tools and, uh, you know, razor knife and scratch all and those kind of things that I keep, you know, visible right here to grab and go. I also have air, again, with the black iron, once I run the one electric cord out, the compressor is up and running, and so I have air in the trailer on one of the little coil um, hoses, and so when I'm bringing my tools back, I am going to dust them off, wipe them down, especially if I'm working out in the rain with framing stuff, get the wet sawdust off and things like that. Put my tools away so they're ready to use next time and I'm not grabbing a tool that's uh, dirty and taking it into a client's house. I want to present myself uh, well. Up top here, uh, this is fairly new using this Raptor space. Um, has been a real advantage to saving space out of drawers and making my clamps uh, easy to grab. So I have the size of clamps and type of clamps all grouped. So I've got the F clamps in various sizes, I've got the three-way clamps. I have uh, additional clamps down there, the, the quick clamps. Um, I have some of the Craig stuff and various uh, you know, just again, they're all grouped, the spring clamps. The ones I use the most are these over here. These are the um, uh, Festool quick clamps. I use those quite a bit. And again, I have my long track stored up here and the mast to the cabinet jack here. So again, I found space up here that I was not using, freed up other space and actually made this stuff easier to get in and out. The clamps particularly, I had them in about three drawers and they were stacked and neat and organized, but I'd have the big ones on the bottom and smaller and smaller and have to dig through. And a couple of times the drawers are mess and you got to reorganize it. This way I can just pull down whatever clamp I don't have to pull down to. I can pull any one of these down and put it back when I'm done with it. In the back here, in addition to the benches and the other things I have, this is where I store a couple of my Festool tracks, as well as my levels. And the, all the levels, there's a screw in here that stops them. So the shorter levels, they will only fit there and then all the way down. So the levels can't be pushed too far in because that's an eight foot long bay. I have uh, some storage here. This is a, a little cart for moving around cabinets from FastCap. And then I have a, an extension plank that I keep there. I use that primarily when I bring my uh, little giant type ladders on uh, if I need to have some elevation. If I'm doing crown molding up high in a, a big room, it's nice to have a plank as opposed to moving the ladder at each location. And then I have these eight foot long deep drawers and this has changed a bit. This top drawer has a lot of shop made fixtures. I have my router fences. I have uh, some jigs I've made for making angle cuts on the table saw. I have my cross cut jig in here. I have some, some of the larger push sticks and things I use, the crown tools I've shown in another video. And they were kind of all spread out and hard to figure out where things were. And so I sort of test fit this drawer and found that everything fit and I could easily get it out. And it's lighter stuff, so this drawer uh, was a bit heavier when I was trying to keep my dust walls, which are heavy, uh, in here. And so I found by moving them back there, freeing up the drawer, that this, uh, this drawer is much easier to use. The bottom drawer is a lot heavier. It's the same. A lot of demo stuff in here. Um, some of my longer clamps that uh, I don't want to put up there, as well as... Uh, big plumbers pipes and breaker bars and and uh, all kind of stuff like that so it's heavy takes a bit of muscle to close it but they're easy to get out i just pull it out most of the way and just leave it open uh, when i'm doing demo i can you know have access to that pretty easy well that's the updated tour of the awesome rolling toolbox if you like these videos be sure to give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel but most important, share the video with others. And if you want a set of workbench plans, click on the link right here in the video. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.